Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and XCPNG has been my favorite hypervisor for a long time. And I want to do a new series on how to get started with XCPNG, and that's going to require this video because I want to make a reference for what the whole project is, what Zen Server is, what Zen Orchestra is, what XCPNG is in its current state. That way, we have a good starting off point for those of you that aren't familiar at all with the project because the project has changed a lot since the videos I've done in the past on it. It's improved so much. It's progressed a lot and it's used by many, many companies. We do a lot of consulting with it and it's amazing how much the team has accomplished over the last few years since this project launched in 2018. But the Zen Hypervisor actually, marking here in October of 2023, is now 20 years old itself. So this project has long roots in the Linux history. It's actually part of the Linux Foundation project. So we're going to start a little bit of history. Then we're going to dive into how the system works functionally, kind of an overview. So we're all on the same page for those of you that go, what is a Zen API and how are all these different tools different than each other and how are they integrated with each other? So let's get started with that. If you just want to jump to any of the playlists or time indexes I have, have playlists listed down below. Time indexes, of course, are in this video, so you can jump to the part that's most interesting to you. So let's get started. Before we get to XCPNG, I want to talk about Zen Project, which is a Linux Foundation project. This has been around for 20 years as of the recording of this video. This is the hypervisor that powers a lot more than just XCPNG. Now, the Zen Project, being that it's controlled by the Linux Foundation. It's part of the Linux Foundation projects. It is extremely well supported, well funded. They have conferences. It is very, very actively developed. If any time I see people tell me that they think it's kind of old and dead or not being developed, I'm like, you're quite wrong about that. This is actually a very active project. Virtualization is obviously what we're speaking on specifically, uh, but Zen is also used in the cloud, not just any cloud. This is actually still powering the majority of AWS. AWS did start their Nitro system, which does use KVM, but it hasn't replaced the entirety of AWS, and I don't think it will. Zen is really at the core of a lot of these companies, and that does include the Alibaba Cloud, Oracle Cloud, Rackspace Public Cloud, and IBM Cloud. Security, the safest and most reliable hypervisor to use security first environments due to lean architecture, advanced security features, and an industry leading security disclosure process. You really want to spend some time on the Zen project and dig into how they do things. They have an absolute clear process and clear team working on security. This is also a very forward thinking project from its architecture, the way it partitions things out. This is good and bad in terms of development, great for security, harder for development. That's the bad part and why some people or why fewer companies other than the larger ones generally jump into Zen as the hypervisor of choice. It just creates a lot of challenges around it. And it's actually used extensively in the automotive and embedded industries. If you start digging around on a Zen project site and go down that rabbit hole, you will find that it's in all kinds of industrial control systems. There's a lot of specialized hypervisors for specialized environments that are all based on Zen. The really important glue that holds this all together is the Zen API, the X API. This is how the servers communicate. So XCPNG relies heavily on this, and it's going to be important later on because this is how Zen Orchestra talks to and orchestrates this. Now, because this whole tool stack has been around for a long time, there is actually a lot of documentation, and you can develop a lot of automation for this because you have a full API interface to make all these changes and controls to the system, which is how the Zen Orchestra system works. So when we get to that part, you'll just notice that I put that it's using the XAPI protocol. This is the primary way it's going to communicate with all of this and it's also lends itself well to doing scripting and any of the automations you may want to do yourself for Zen. So it gives you a nice interface to talk to these different devices. Now, the next company I want to mention is Bates because it's a little bit of history and a little bit of background. Bates is the company behind both XCP and G and Zen Orchestra. Those are two separate products that they make, but Zen Orchestra is an orchestration tool for XCP and G. If you didn't use Zen Orchestra, well, they have XO Lite that is in beta as of the recording of this video. That will be something I do a video on in the future, which can control it as well. But you can control it from just the command line and the API commands if you want. That actually is a thing you can do. It's just not obviously that easy to do. There was a Windows tool to manage it. So pretty much you use Zen Orchestra with XCPNG. It is the best choice for managing it. Vates is the company behind it. That matters because they make the Zen Orchestra system and it comes in two flavors. I want to get that very clear right here. You can get XOA or X 
ZO appliance is what they're referring to, or Zen Orchestra appliance. That is a supported, delivered for businesses, automatically updating system that is easy to deploy and comes with support that you can buy. That's why there's pricing at the top, but all of this is open source. If you would like to compile it yourself, you'll find in my playlist a video of how to compile this. You'll find detailed instructions by the team at Bates on how to compile this. So if you're a home user or you want to build this in your lab and test it out, you can compile and get this full experience of all the fun tools and the things I've talked about in my videos. Almost all the videos I've done on Zen Orchestra, I've done with the fully open source self-compiled version because I want you to understand that you can do this yourself. You can grab the code, you can build it. But if you are going to use this in a business, you can get support. You can have this delivered as an automatic updating solution. And they refer that to this their appliance version. Now, you'll find old videos that I did on Citrix Zen Server. This was Citrix version of Zen Server, and this is prior to 2018. Now, they still have it today, and I believe they've dropped the word Citrix and just call it Zen Server. That's their name. This is separate from the Zen Project, but it is the Zen Hypervisor, and it's spun by Citrix. Citrix made the community very angry by having a point release update that removed a bunch of features and put them all behind a paywall. So you had a functioning Zen Server, you loaded an update, and the features went away, and people are like, well, what happened? And Citrix is like, yeah, we decided to start charging for things that were free. Well, a point release version ago and we put it in the notes didn't you read it before you clicked update and by the way you can't go back so citrix really angered the zen community and a thing happened on kickstarter this is where back to oliver lambert the president behind the vates company said you know why don't we just spin this ourselves and manage XCPNG? We already have Zen Orchestra products, so why don't we become the maintainers of this and grow the company and do it a Kickstarter? And this Kickstarter went extremely well back in 2018. October of 2023, this has become an extremely popular project, especially because it is a drop-in replacement for Citrix Zen Server without any license fees or any features that you have to buy. You can buy support. There's a button up there on their website that says Pro Support if you'd like to purchase support, but you can just download this and run it. You can grab out an ISO with no license fees attached to it. You download it, you can start running it and managing all of this hypervisor goodness from here. It has become an amazing project that I'm excited about. And that's why this whole video is about. Now let's get into how XCPNG works. And the term pool versus host matters a lot. First, Every host has to belong to a pool. Many hosts can belong to the same pool, but even if you have a single host, it's still a pool. This is not a cluster. That is not a word used exactly in the Zen Orchestra and XCPNG verbiage. We start with the pool and we have a host in the pool. Inside the pools where you define your network interfaces for all the virtual machines. So whether they're VLANs or LACP bonds or whatever you want to do with them, you may set them up on the host and attach them to the pool network interfaces. So we have the physical, you know, ETH0, ETH1, et cetera, that's on a host. And then that maps to the pool network. So there is a level of definition between them, but you're always defining the network at the pool level because it's a resource pool. This one host may have local storage and we'll get to remote storage and we'll get to Zen Orchestra in a moment, but it's just important to understand how the pools work. Because when we add more hosts to that same pool, we map the ETH0 and ETH1 of each one of these hosts, so all the physical interfaces for the network, but you're always defining the pool network. So when I define a VLAN on the pool network, all the hosts in that pool get that same VLAN design that can be attached to any one of the VMs. So if I have a VM running on either host, and I move it from one host to the other, it's always going to get those resources defined by the pool in terms of the networking. So the networking is always defined at the pool level. Now let's say we have three hosts and then we have a shared storage. When a shared storage is within a pool, this allows that shared storage to be shared as the name implies, between all three hosts at once. So the host can have local storage where a VM can live, but maybe you want that virtual machine, and this is a complete live migration option. We can live migrate the running VM's storage right down to the shared storage. Then from there, we can live migrate the VM between any one of the three hosts. What enables this to work so seamlessly is when you have the pool network set up because it doesn't matter which host you start the VM on. When you've defined a network interface to the virtual machines, they are defined within the pool network and because it all has to match on all the hosts, no problem. That VM can start on any host and it always will work and be attached to the network expected. This is a little bit of pre-work and you can remap interfaces. And obviously this is most ideal as any virtualization platform is to have all the hosts be as 
similar as possible because that's obviously going to be the best way to do it. You can't have one host with four network interfaces and another one with only two because, well, if those interfaces aren't available, how would you start the VM on the interface list host where they need to match? So the resource pools really do homogenize, if you will, how all these hosts present things. It doesn't mean you can't have extra interfaces, just when you define them, they should match and then the shared storage. This also is really nice because as you bring in more hosts, especially when you're doing series of them that are all the same, they automatically get all the resources. So you don't really have to assign anything. The hosts can be popped in, the hosts can be popped back out and reset, reformatted, whatever, and then brought back in. Not a big deal because all the data is built at the pool level. That data is replicated across all the currently joined hosts, but the master host is the one that will always be in charge of it. Now that can change. You can dynamically switch who the master host is. They all stay in sync with each other. So if you have to maintenance the master one, you just tell a different one to be master. The process is really smooth. And in an HA situation, you can automate more of that and you can automate failures. You need a minimum of three hosts to solve the split brain problem. If you want to do an HA, so you have a shared storage and then you have the hosts and yeah, it just will auto elect. So if one of them goes down, no big deal. It can automatically switch. So there's a lot of automation that can be easily set up in here. And I've got videos on that. We'll talk about that later. You can also create many shared storage all dynamically. And as you add shared storage to the pool, that also gets added to all the hosts simultaneously. So when you're building these out, this is another advantage of a resource pool is once you have it built, when I add a shared storage device to it, and I can add quite a few of them, or you know, I want to expand and I add one more, it automatically adds it to all of them. So they all become something that the host can just use dynamically as you spin them up. And for those wondering, XCPNG pools can go up to 64 hosts in a single resource pool. Now, just because something's not in a resource pool, resource pool does all the things I had mentioned about shared resources between the network interfaces and the shared storage, but you can still move, and we'll talk about that in a moment, the VMs in and out of one resource pool and into another. So you could build a thousand hosts and then break them out, divide them up into groups of hosts based on different parameters you may have, but then you didn't lose the ability to move virtual machines between pools. That's actually a cool feature. And that's where your Zen Orchestra comes in speaking with the X API. That's how all this stays in control. Now, Zen Orchestra does not have to be running for the XCPNG host to do their thing. So they can spin up VMs, run the VMs, those VMs will be functional, but the Zen Orchestra first reads via the X API, the status of everything. And that's how Zen Orchestra populates it. So when you connect it to a host, you just have to give it username and password for the host. And it goes, okay, here's all the stuff I'm going to read from the database and present it to you on the screen. If you make any changes in Zen Orchestra, it just pushes via the Zen API back to each one of these XCPNG hosts. One instance of Zen Orchestra can talk to many different hosts and many different pools simultaneously. So it has a relationship that's a lot more than just one to one, it's one to many. Matter of fact, this is kind of an interesting feature is that it's one to many and many to one. So you can simultaneously have two instances of Zen Orchestra connected to all these different pools. So I actually have this set up because Zen Orchestra itself is a virtual machine generally that runs on one of the hosts, or you can build a VM that runs on your local desktop that runs Zen Orchestra that you spin up and you can have that as a spare. And because Zen Orchestra just needs the username and password to read the data from the XCPNG host, you can also use Zen Orchestra just to start it up and reconnect and get something done because one of them went down. Just a really cool concept the way they work. Of note here is the remotes on the side. Remotes is the term they have for backup locations. I got a really good video where I deep dive into all the backup features. This is a way that Zen Orchestra can use an SMB, NFS, or S3 as a storage device for backing up all the virtual machines. So it can be attached to all these different resource pools, and we can then run a backup to job that sends it to and whatever NAS storage you want on the other side. There's nothing proprietary about it. It can do it on a standard SMB share, NFS share, or S3 bucket. And I should say S3 compatible storage. So there's actually ways to get this attached to not necessarily an Amazon S3, but something else that emulates S3, which a lot of things do. So this gives you a lot of different storage options for how you may want to back up your VMs. And 
then orchestra orchestrates all those backups and of course the restores as well so you can back up from your first pool and then restore to your next pool or your third pool however you'd like to do it and one more interesting scenario is the concept of proxy workers because this actually works over a vpn the xapi is actually pretty lightweight but as I mentioned about the backups, backups obviously are not a lightweight thing depending on the size of the VM. Migrating that data across the VPN may not be that reasonable. So there's actually an option in Zen Orchestra to use a proxy worker that is offsite. You can have XCPI communicating with a few local hosts and then you can have a VPN that gets you to your remote host. But when you wanna do the backup, the proxy worker is actually going to talk to the NAS storage on behalf of your Zen Orchestra. So you can actually manage this completely remotely and maybe at the remote site, there's another person there managing the Zen pool with their own Zen Orchestra instance. These are, once again, dynamic ways you can allocate this. So you can have multiple instances of Zen Orchestra. And to touch again on the backups, these are some of the backup features in their documentation. And by the way, the whole Zen Projects documentation has really come a long way since it's launched in 2018 here in 2023 or whenever you're watching this video it just keeps getting better but the backups specifically we have rolling snapshots full backups incremental backups full replications metadata backups which means the pool data itself file level backups mirror backups and my favorite thing is it'll actually do test restores so you can have an automated system that backs up from one pool restores that vm as a test back to the pool and then determines whether or not that vm booted lets you know and that's all part of the process to make this even more fun you could actually back up from one pool and maybe have a whole completely separate pool that you do your test restore maybe it's your dr your whole disaster recovery planning as a separate pool you can actually do a test restore on that backup and automate it to a different pool than what it was backed up on now, this is as much as I have to say about XCPNG, Zen Orchestra, and the Zen Project in this video, but there's still more. Check out their documentation. Check out my playlist I have that covers a lot of different topics and deep dives on everything from memory management to processors to how Zen Orchestra handles all the backups and even some disaster recovery planning. Also, check out their blog at Zen Orchestra and XCPNG. They give all the details of the new releases. Their forums are very active by the developers themselves who spend a lot of time answering questions and engaging with the community to constantly improve the product. And their engagement level is really high, which makes it a lot of fun just to go in there and read all the latest developments and challenges. I participate in there myself because of the amount of consulting we do with Zen and what we see from our clients that are using it. And some of them are using thousands of virtual machines. This system scales very well. If you'd like to like and subscribe, that would be great. I always appreciate that. If you want to connect with me, you can find me over in my forums or head over to lawrencesystems.com and connect with me at whatever socials are available at the time you go there. All right, and thanks.